A lot of the news is getting flipped on its head backwards, so you should believe none of it. No Israeli has anything to do with destroying the mountain at all. Bennett is selling the country to appease international leaders without regards to anyone here in Israel. This is the Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of fake news, you should connect to the true and authentic stories of Israel. And guys, there is some news coming out of Israel and in the international media this week that you 100% should not believe. First of all, Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett probably just ended his political career, um, most likely. By because he closed the Temple Mount, he capitulated to international pressure and to pressure from within and closed the Temple Mount to Christians, to Jews, to any non Muslims. Let's just um, say pressure from the Islamic Jihad. How about that, Luke? That would be what right, I would but say. The, but also other pressure, like the U.S. government or and they, the United Nations. And the um, EU. Yeah. And anybody else. Guys, a lot of things are topsy turvy here in Israel this week. A lot of the news is getting flipped on its head backwards, so you should believe none of it unless you ch check your sources. Um, by the way, all of our source links are down in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and let us know what you think. Let us know some of the false headlines that you figured out were false. Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So here's where it started, guys. And obviously, you know, there's been terrorist attacks happening in Israel, but last week, on Friday, which happened to be Good Friday, it happened to be the night that Passover was starting, and also happened to be right in the middle of Ramadan. So you got three different religions, uh, holidays happening all together. Jewish people came to Jerusalem, went to the Western Wall, to the Kotel, to pray on Friday with Passover starting that night. Very, uh, something that happens every single year, right? Well, rocks started raining down on their heads from above. And uh, by the way, that is a lethal situation because uh, the Palestinian Arabs up on the Temple Mount decided to start throwing rocks over, and uh, the police went on to try and stop it. And when they went on, they were met by an Arab mob, uh, a lot of youth, a lot of Arabs holding Palestinian uh, or Hamas flags, uh, Palestinian Arab flags, uh, throwing rocks, shooting fireworks, and then they barricaded themselves inside, themselves inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque where they had stockpiled weapons. We've even got photos. On the one side, maybe an older man praying, and on the other, right beside him, a uh, stockpile of rocks and other kinds of weapons turned into full-scale riots, um, and eventually the police had to enter the mosque and break up the riots and arrested quite a few of the rioters and kind of stopped it for the moment, but uh, there's been a lot of things happening since then. Some, a couple of major incidents, and maybe you've heard of these, is that uh, seven, no, ten different buses, sorry, driving right by the old city of Jerusalem were pelted with rocks. When I say pelted, I mean the windshield was broken. Uh, thankfully, the driver was not, well, actually one of the drivers was hit, but uh, not hit in such a way that he lost control of the bus and crashed. Um, very brave drivers in these buses, wounding seven different people. So you got like public transportation buses with Israelis on them, rocks through the windshields, through the windows. Uh, everybody's hitting the floor, a lot of people injured, um, but these buses completely shattered. Another major attack that maybe you saw a video of, we'll show some on the screen right now, is um, three or four Jewish men walking to the Kotel, the Western Wall to pray, wrapped in their talits, and they were brutally jumped and attacked by a number of Arabs who jumped on, thankfully, without like knives or, or major weapons, but just pounding them, kicking them, jumping on them, punching them, and then taking off running as fast as they could. So guys, these are the things that are happening and now, in light of all that, and you saw the footage, you saw the photos for yourself, and uh, after we talk about the international reactions, we'll tell you about some of our personal experiences. Both Josh and I were on the Temple Mount two separate times in the past three days. We'll tell you about those. But first, in light of all that, knowing that that's what actually happened here in Israel, here's the international condemnations from around the world. Guys, we got uh, the UAE, Bahrain, the Morocco, all Which, the. I mean, yeah, the, I want to mention yeah. these are members of the Abraham Accords, people that signed <laughs> that, normalization yeah. agreements with Israel. That's why it's significant that these places specifically are bashing Israel, condemning Israel for what? Luke, you just explained the scene on the Temple Mount. Um, I would even go further to say that 
uh, I just want to describe it a little more to say, you know, you got these uh, Islamic jihadists that are have they they're treating the Alaska mosque as like some sort of Alamo or something. They're going inside and they're like barring themselves, and then they're like, uh, but here's the difference: they're actually destroying the place. Yeah. Like I'm walking outside of this this Alaska mosque, and they're they're all the Arabs are inside just chucking rocks at every opening possible. They're busting all well, they the bro- windows, break their own window, out of the place. and then they just use it as a, a way to throw rocks out. It's it's absolutely horrendous. And in front of that, they've climbed up, they've ripped out every piece of anything you know uh, sacred inside. They're just destroying their whole place as if it actually maybe let's just say it doesn't really mean anything to them. It's fairly obvious that it's just a political situation going up there. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely, nope, no Israeli has anything to do with destroying the mountain at all. I myself was just up there, and they are absolutely wrecking. You're talking about breaking out their own windows out of their own mosque that they pretend to love, and then taking huge uh, pieces of tin and lumber and boards and throwing them out into the middle of the courtyards from inside the building, and then going around and blockading the whole right. mountain and throwing well, think, trash yeah. everywhere. I don't think praying inside the mosque next to a stockpile of weapons rocks. and rocks weapons, yeah. is a very good representation that this is a holy site to you. So, so this is what they are standing with. With, um, I'm speaking about those that agreed with the Am- Abraham Accords. This is they're they're aligning themselves with the <coughs> radical Islamists that are choosing to stockpile weapons in their place of worship to attack the Jews when they come up to just walk around the site. The Jews are not even really right. allowed to pray or to do anything. They're only just walking as like a tourist on a tourist site. They're going around the top of the mountain just like you and I were, and we were met by what? Women yelling Allah Akbar right in our faces being, uh, I would say that was not like really comfortable. No. I don't really like women yelling in my face, Allah Akbar, I'm a Christian. And I could just assume Jews would feel the same. Like that's just not right. something very nice. And then the the constant rocks clashing against the side of a building right next to us that well, the like, Israeli police yeah. were sheltering the police us had, from throwing the rocks The police were, had a line between the group that we were part of and I had my wife and all of my little children with me in a stroller, but we had to reroute and walk further away from the mosque, route from the normal path. And then there's a certain route route that Jewish groups travel, you know, like they walk when they go up there. Right. And literally the only thing Jewish groups are doing is walking a circle around the route and the uh, around the Temple Mount, and then they're escorted off. And the whole time they're on, they're with a group of Israeli police who, one, make sure they're not doing anything they shouldn't, uh, like praying or bowing or anything like that. And two, are there to protect them from the Arabs and the Muslims that are up there, right? But our group, uh, did you have to like hike? Could you walk the normal path or did no. you have to hike through the rocks? No, the literally, because the, the, the place is actually holy to Jews. Like right. that's who it's actually holy to. Jewish people believe that the temple stood there and stood there actually twice, and they pray that it will return again. Now, Jewish people, because they believe the place is actually holy, they're not taking all their trash and throwing it all over the mountain mm-hmm. and throwing rocks and breaking down everything there and acting like wild hooligans, literally. They they're actually don't even walk up with shoes because they believe it's a holy place. That Most of them are walking barefoot, mm-hmm. and the Arabs block off the main path, which now means right. many barefoot literally- rabbis, old men and holy men, are now walking through... The well and, uh, and little children orchards. and stroller. It was so rough. You couldn't that even I, get your I could barely through. get my stroller through because the normal path had thousands of rocks covering them. Some of them small, but some of them huge. They literally built rock walls and and actually from reading the news, they took ancient artifacts that they had already destroyed and used them to build these barricades so that the Jewish people couldn't go to the normal places that they do. And so we had to hike through like the the weeds and the rocks. I barely got my stroller over in certain places. It was it was really a humiliation. Yeah, totally a humiliation. That's exactly what I felt when I was there. Christians and Jews are being humiliated on the Temple Mount, but yet the Arab world, uh, even the Western world says this. This is what they say. Uh, they're, they're claiming that Israel st- stormed the al Aska Mosque. Is that what Israel did? Did we just describe the scene? Israel stormed it. So, Who's the one so throwing they the rocks start, and acting like wild They hooligans? stockpile weapons. They throw rocks over the edge, hundreds of feet below on the Kotel Plaza. Um, and when the police come on to take care of the, the instigators, they an all-out riot happens. And then 
every other country in the world decides to condemn <laughs> Israel for storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What did Israel actually do? Israel actually went in and brought peace. There was a huge riots going on. Israeli police went in and said, "Hey, enough of this." this I want to read a couple of the. Uh, let's read a couple of the comments from some from uh, the some of the. Arab countries that decided to condemn Israel. Jordanian prime minister, which uh, several co- several quotes from Jordan because they're the ones that are actually supposed to be in charge of the Temple Mount, right, from 1967. I'll explain more in a minute. Jordanian prime minister Bishir al Kassawane said, quote, I congratulate all Palestinians and all Jordanian Islamic walk for work for workers who stand as tall as a turret and those who throw stones at pro-Zionists who defile the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the security of the Israeli occupation government. You should note that Jordan is officially at peace with Israel, okay? They're not like an enemy country. King Abdullah in Jordan called on Israel to, quote, cease all illegal and provocative measures that violate the historical and legal status quo on the Mount, which he said could, quote, push towards further escalation. And 88 Jordanian members of parliament signed a petition to expel the Israeli ambassador. <laughs> Did I mention that Jordan is supposed to be at peace with Israel? <laughs> and Israel, like, provides a lot of, what do they provide for them? Water? Water and gas. And, they, yeah, uh, like, huge. They're like, Israel basically props the whole yeah. thing up just to bring a little stability to the area. Um, and we'll get into more of that history. Guys, but the even the UN Security Council is now <coughs> meeting in Jerusalem today to discuss the escalation of the situation in specifically on the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. Um, And the King of Jordan, once again, is pushing that uh, they would accept that Israel would back out of their policy for the Temple Mount, meaning their policy is is that Israel's actually sovereign on the Temple Mount, and they're only allowing the Jordanians to administer their, uh, you know, walk is allowed to work there and, and be there, but Israel is in charge of security there. What the King of Jordan would like is to be in charge again. But as you guys all know, he actually lost the war. Israel Mm -hmm. won the war. Israel maintains that stance, that strong position of sovereignty over that holy mountain. It's not for the Jordanians to decide. But he's pressuring the world to say, no, 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 we need to go back, you know, all the way back to 1967 again, and I need to be in charge, and I need to be the one calling the shots on the mountain. He wants no war to be had. He just wants it to be like a policy, UN security policy. Hey, just push them, and then they'll give it back to me completely. That's literally what's going on right now. We mm-hmm. also have Secretary well, of State Kind of gets a little bit personal well. here for Americans, if you're watching, um, because our own Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, according to Reuters, in a call on Monday, Blinken and Jordanian Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi discussed the importance of Israelis and Palestinians working to end the violence and refraining from escalatory actions. According to State Department spokesman Ned Price. Um, But, and then Price also emphasized to Israeli and Palestinian leaders, quote, the importance of Israelis and Palestinians working to end the cycle of violence in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza by exercising restraint and refraining from actions that escalate tensions. It gets even worse, okay? Are you ready for it? Brace yourselves. Um, The cycle, oh, sorry. Anyways, but what I was saying is that that what I wanted to pull out here was the the specific quote about the cycle of violence. The cycle of violence, because the world, our own U.S. government, wants to put what the Palestinian Islamic radical jihadist terrorists are doing on the same level right. with Israel defending themselves by the security forces, right? Um, because when they when the Palestinian Arab terrorists start something by throwing rocks at buses, busting windows, murdering people, uh, attacking Jews in the old city on their way to prayer, and then Israel responds and stops the violence, then the U.S. State Department wants to say, stop the cycle of violence. We encourage Israelis and Palestinian leaders to stop the cycle of violence. There's no way to compare what's happening here. Um, Secretary Blinken also emphasized the importance of upholding the historic status quo at the Haram Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount and appreciation for the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan's special role as custodian of Muslim holy places in Jerusalem. Jordan is supposed to be the custodian. They're supposed to be the keepers of the Temple Mount after 1967. Unfortunately, Moshe Dayan handed that control back over to Jordan and appointed them as the custodians. Um, and since then, unfortunately, there has been very little freedom for anything except for Muslims. 
because non Jewish or non Muslim visitors are severely restricted, cannot pray, uh, cannot walk anywhere without a, a an Israeli guard, basically. Right. And there's no freedom, no freedom of expression, no freedom of religion, no freedom of anything, unless you're a Muslim. What's going on? I want to look at the greater Arab world. What is happening and why are they pressure? What is what's going on here? We have 1967 was the last like major, right? We had all these people just specifically to the Temple Mount. We were in Israel actually gained sovereignty once again over the mount. Um, we have right now a unifying force. We have Gaza shot a rocket yesterday to toward uh, Israel, uh, unifying its stance with the fight against Israel, right? They're unifying with the PLO, the PLO unifying their decision with the Jordanians. The Jordanians' decision is unified with what? The whole world is, we just, we just went through, pressuring Israel about what? The Temple Mount and this stance, this strong position that Israel has in its sovereignty. Israel won the Six-Day War it, come on, if you don't get that Israel's connected to the Temple Mount, you just really need to go take a hike. Uh, Israel, <laughs> that's like the heart and soul of the Jewish people. It's the heart and soul of the Bible. Anybody, any conservative in the world, any conservative Christian in the world, any person in the world that knows uh, Jews, Christians, you got to know that it's connected to the Jewish history that dates back thousands and thousands of years. You can't uh, just kind of throw it off to the side. The world right now, and especially especially the Muslim world, is is unifying an attempt to destroy that fact that the Temple Mount belongs. It's the uh, ancestral homeland. The Jews are sovereign on that mountain. That in itself is really embarrassing to the Muslim uh, world. So they're unifying themselves. Let's get a, just a quick brief rundown. 1967, the Jordanians lost their sovereignty. As we mentioned, it was handed over. The Jews won the war. Israel won the war. They handed those keys back over to the Waqf after they won out of, that's just what Israel does. They're just like very peaceful people. They say, <laughs> Hey, you must, okay. Yeah. You've got a few sites here. Here's the keys. Just you feel free to administer the stuff here. And they handed it back to them in full faith that they would treat them well and that they would be a, a great relationship now that they were were, they won. Well, wrong. That's not what happened. They immediately uh, were just prepping the scene for a new attack, and they did attack. 1973, they had an attack against all these Arab nations that they treated very well. Um, even today in Jordan, um, you have massive protest happening because the majority of the Jordanians are actually Palestinian Arabs. 70% of them are Palestinian Arabs in Jordan, okay? So that means the majority of Jordanians actually are Palestinians. Uh, huge connection to this. So in reality, Jordan is not just this entity over itself. It's very connected to the Palestinian plight here, majorly connected to this. So you can't like um, separate the two. So when it comes to the Temple Mount, Jewish presence there, uh, Jews being allowed to do anything there, that's why you're always hearing Jordan. Jordan's always involved because there's a huge population of Palestinian Arabs in Jordan, mm -hmm. and the king himself is actually not so popular. Hmm. Abdullah is not such a popular guy there, as you can tell. 70% of his population are not even really with him at all. Right. They stand more with the PLO in the Judea Samaria area and are mostly concerned about the Temple Mount. So if he doesn't act strong with the Temple Mount, he loses majorly in his own backyard. You got 70% of his population rooting, and not just rooting, that would be what we would do in America. We root for things. No, <laughs> in the Middle East, you like attack for things. You, you, you turn into a crazy mob. So really, he's got crazy mobs and riots going on in Jordan, pressure, pressuring him to do something radical. And it lies on really great fallow soil here in Israel when we have an extremely weak government. We have Bennett saying... Uh, yes, whatever you say. He bows down to Abdullah, basically, and right. says, feel well, free to, uh, we won't go up there anymore. Whatever you say. Oh, and that's, this is breaking this that. morning as of the recording on today, on that's April right. 20th, that we wake up this morning to the news that Prime Minister Naftali Bennett yeah. has decided, unprecedented too, unprecedented. I was reading, I think in the past, if they ever closed the Temple Mount, it was maybe for a couple days. Yeah. And right now they're talking about 12 days that the Temple Mount is going to be closed to Christians and Jew closed to non-Muslims. Right. That is absolutely unprecedented, <laughs> especially right now. Um, you have Easter, Passover, 
uh, and Ramadan all going on. There's three major holidays for three different religions that are very important. And Jerusalem is a holy place for all three of these religions. And now you're cutting off all freedom to celebrate these uh, people's individual holidays right. for everybody except for Muslims. Right. So Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, I think this is the end of his political career because the government is about to collapse. Uh, maybe more on that in a different show. Well, come on. They're taking but, advantage of this weakness that they yeah, see. If Israel caving, is strong, every time right. you did, never, never did it happen that when Israel is strong that something like this would happen. The Arab world, the Middle Eastern world, respects strength, and Israel is not strong yeah. right now. Israel is backing down in every way to this jihadic pressure that's going that's attacking Israel from within and from without as well. Israel's bowed to that, and yeah. you will see. Mark these words. You'll see the the attack increase. The more Israel backs down, the more the attack will increase. That's a fact. Josh M.K. Itamar Ben Gavir, right wing member of Knesset, here said, "Quote: If the news of the Temple Mount closing is correct, Bennett raised a white flag tonight. He surrendered to terrorism, surrendered to Hamas, surrendered to the enemies. Bennett, you have no mandate to sell the country. Go." I mean, unfortunately, that what he says is very true. That Bennett is selling the country to appease international leaders without regards to anyone here in Israel. And yes, he's about to be gone here from Israel because the government will dissolve. There'll be new elections very soon. Um, Matan Peleg, chairman of Im, Im Tirtzu, right-wing NGO here in Israel, said, quote, the Israeli government is creating a direct incentive for terrorism after breaking the status quo against Jews and enabling, um, I don't know that word, here in, in Ramadan, the meaning is clear, a racist policy against Jews and a violation of freedom of worship Racism and incentives for terrorism must stop. Bottom line, like you said, uh, radicals don't res don't respect giving in. Right. They respect strength. Guys, the conclusion is that whatever you've heard on the news this week, what we showed you and told you and personally experienced ourselves, that's what actually happened. And you saw the videos, you saw the photos for yourself, but Palestinian Arab leaders, Arab country leaders, the UN, and unfortunately the US government are all blaming Israel for the recent violence. Um, what actually happened? The police put down riots on the Temple Mount and Jewish and Christian groups, ourselves included, visited the Temple Mount because of the holidays that are going on. Passover is happening right here. And what did we do when we visited? We walked around in one circle and yes, we did pray. Okay, if that's an offense, then so be it. And in response, the Temple Mount has been closed to all except Muslims, and the world is claiming that Israel is storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque and violating the status quo. 100% of all of this is completely false. You need to know that. You need to comment. You need to share and let everybody you know this is what's actually happening here in Israel. Guys, before we close out, a couple of quick, great ways to support Israel because Israel needs your support more than ever. We have two affiliates down in the description below. One is Israeli Good Wine, a great way to directly purchase wine, Israeli wine and have it shipped straight to your door if you live in the United States. Another one is Artsa, which is beautiful products straight from Israel, also shipped straight to your, uh, straight to your door. We earn a small commission for purchases made through these links. So also a great way to not only support Israel, but support the work that we're doing. Guys, get the conversation going. We want to know what you think down in the comments below. What's some headlines, some fake headlines that you saw this week? Remember to tune out the fake news. Tune into what's actually happening here in the heartland of Israel. We'll be back next week here at The Israel Guys. guys thanks so much for watching two quick things before you go one smash that subscribe button make sure you hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any more of our content secondly if you want to help us produce more stories and authentic truth straight from israel's heartland you can do so at patreon.com slash the israel guys or at our very own website it's the israel both links are in the description below